All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on cryptocurrency every day. My name's Austin, and in today's video, I wanna do a deep dive on two very new altcoins, both of which have received an incredible amount of hype this year in 2019. Those two altcoins are Grin and Beam, both very new. Beam's mainnet just went live on January 3rd, and Grin's mainnet is about to go live on January 15th. From everything that I've read and I've seen in the interviews that I've heard, there's a lot of people saying that Grin and Beam are two of the cryptocurrencies to watch out for this year. So let's talk about it. And despite what the haters are going to say, today's video, it's not a paid review. I was just genuinely curious mainly because of all, of all the hype that I've been hearing about. And upon some research, a lot of the hype comes from this, Mimblewimble. Mimblewimble is the technology behind Grin and behind Beam. And while these are two separate coins, they're using the same technology. And Mimblewimble, we have not seen this before. This is new. And, and this is the reason that a lot of people are excited for cryptocurrency this year. So in today's video, we'll explain what this is, how it's a game changer. I wanna explain the positives as well as the negatives for each coin. And then at the very end, I wanna share with you which way I'm leaning, which coin do I like better? All this and more here at Altcoin, da <clears throat> Altcoin Daily. Like I said before, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You do not wanna miss one of our daily videos. Like always, Let's jump in. What is Mimblewimble? Mimblewimble is, it's not a blockchain, it's not a cryptocurrency, but it's a protocol. Mimblewimble is a lightweight privacy-based protocol for the blockchain. So privacy-based, that means that Grin and Beam, they're both privacy coins, but they're different because of the tech behind them. And part of that is why I said lightweight because Mimblewimble is basically a scaling solution for privacy. And I'll, I'll explain more about what differentiates Mimblewimble in a second, but first let's talk about how it's similar to other privacy-based features. How is Mimblewimble similar? Well, Mimblewimble transactions are a derivation of another transaction type known as confidential transactions. Now we've seen confidential transactions, CTs, in other privacy-based cryptos before. They're essentially a way to encrypt uh, the transaction, blinding factors make the transaction private. Another privacy feature that we've seen in other privacy coins, as well as Mimble, Mimble Wimble, is CoinJoin. In addition, Mimble Wimble transactions also leverage another piece of cryptographic innovation CoinJoin is a mechanism by which payments from multiple spenders multiple spenders are combined to form a single transaction, thus making it diffic difficult for an outside party to determine which payment was intended for which recipient. So it joins all the transactions together, it makes it more private. So at first glance when I read all this, nothing big stuck out, stood out to me. But the big advantage of Mimblewimble, I would say, and again, I'm no developer, so do your own research, just use this as a jumping off point, is the scalability that Mimblewimble offers. And the other big advantage for Mimblewimble, and who invented Mimblewimble? Well, uh, nobody knows. The guy chose to keep his anonymity as well. He just goes by Tom Elvis Jed Uso, the French name of the fictional Harry Potter character Voldemort. The name Mimblewimble is also a Harry Potter reference. It's one of the spells. But the big differentiator for Mimblewimble, which is used in Grin and Beam, is it has smaller blocks and smaller blockchain data size. So that's the big difference, the scalability that it allows. So if you take away one thing from today's video, just know that Mimblewimble is much, much less data intensive. Meaning with regular transactions, if you send a transaction, if one sends a transaction to two, that's all on the ledger. If two sends a transaction to three, you have now 
transaction from one to two, you have the transaction from two to three, all on the ledger. And as it goes down the list, all this data is continued to be stored. Now, Mimblewimble, much less data intensive because all you really need, because um, you don't really need to know the transaction from seven to eight if you're number 12, you don't care. All you need to know is, are the coins real? Are they usable? So with Mimblewimble, I think the word that I read was prunes the data, and then you just have the transaction one sent to 12. You don't need all this, this middle data in there. And we've never seen that before, and that makes uh, Mimblewimble more scalable. This is not just gonna be used with these two individual coins. This is a protocol that could also be used to enhance existing cryptocurrencies, certain ones like Bitcoin. So the reason that Mimblewimble is exciting just a lot of crypto fanatics in general is because of the scalability as well as the privacy it offers, you could essentially add this to the Bitcoin network and really enhance the privacy and scalability of Bitcoin. That's a game changer because who knows which cryptocurrency, which privacy coin is going to win in the end. But Mimblewimble is definitely here to stay. Let's keep going. Where does Mimblewimble come short? It requires all transaction participants to be online for the transaction to occur. So this might be seen as a little in inconvenient because right now I can send Bitcoin to a public address anytime I want. It doesn't matter if they're if they're quote unquote online or not. But with Mimblewimble, the nodes need to be online. So if somebody's across the world and they're sleeping and they're not online, it can be a real inconvenience. Also, this inconvenience is highlighted in that it's more difficult to create multi-party transactions as multiple parties have to communicate to craft the transaction. So if you have multiple parties in the transaction, everybody's gotta be online and can just cause a delay. A little bit of a negative. Let's keep going. So to sum this up, before we get to Grin and Beam, and before I kind of go over the negatives of those cryptocurrencies, and please, in the comments below, let me know if you're investing. Let me know which one you like. But additionally, Grin is uniquely scalable since Mimblewimble stores only a small amount of data on the blockchain. This means that it'll be cheap and easy to run a full node, and new nodes will be able to sync up with the network quickly and efficiently. Like I said, the big pull from Mimblewimble is it doesn't use a lot of data. Further, something else to note about Mimblewimble is its cuckoo cycle proof of work algorithm is designed to be more egalitarian and centralization resistant than other alternatives in the near term. I'm no developer, but essentially cuckoo makes this cryptocurrency, this proof of work cryptocurrency more resistant to centralization. So Grin and Beam, both proof of work coins, they're going to be real um, competitors, competition to other proof of work privacy coins out there, like Monero, because Cuckoo Cycle, I guess, uh, fights centralization. All right, so let's zoom in on Grin. What is Grin? Grin is one of the few projects that aims to be a true currency so it used to buy your cup of coffee, a true currency that has some of the features that make Bitcoin so interesting. So Grin is like a better version of Bitcoin. Um, just like Bitcoin, Grin also has an anonymous founder, a leaderless development team, proof of work consensus, no on-chain governance, and there's no pre-mine. So there's a lot of positives with Grin. And I'll leave this uh, link to the website down below. As I said with Mimblewimble, a lot of the same things that describe Mimblewimble describe Grin. It's a private and lightweight Mimblewimble blockchain. When you see lightweight, that just means it's incredibly easier to scale. And if you'll notice the website, a big differentiator between Mimble, uh, between Grin and Beam is Grin is 100% community driven, while Beam does have a nonprofit behind it. We'll get to Beam in a second. We're gonna to get to Beam in a second, but I basically listed all of the positives of Grin in terms of that it's uh, has cuckoo, was that, what was the word? Uh, it's a cuckoo cycle P, uh, proof of work, 
meaning that it's very much centralization resistance, which I like. There's no pre-mine, and even though we don't know who founded it, it's an anonymous guy, if there's no pre-mine, there's, I think that you know, you're not going to see any sort of scam or, or exit because they don't have any coins. And it's just a scalable, decentralized, private payment system. So there's a lot of things to like. I mean, it's very simple. What are some of the negatives? Well, I've already mentioned no public keys, which is not necessarily a negative. It's just we've never seen that before. And I need to do my own research because it's we haven't really seen it tested at all. But a big negative, which is also a feature of Grin, so some view it as a positive, is their monetary policy. A new Grin token is issued every second, and it's likely to stay that way forever. What does that mean? That means there's no max supply. There's an infinite number of Grin. And the reason they chose this monetary policy is because the fear is when the, when the supply the entire uh, max supply for Bitcoin, let's say, is out in the ecosystem, miners are going to have to, you know, you won't need to mine blocks anymore, and miners are just going to have to get their money from transaction fees. And so uh, Grin didn't want high transaction fees. So it's just an endless, um, an, an endless max supply. And just the negative of that is that'll cause pretty significant inflation within the first couple years. Every year that inflation is going to get less and less as more coins get into the ecosystem. But right off the bat, expect heavy inflation if you're investing in Grin. Let's talk about Beam. Very similar, almost the exact same. No pre-mine, no ICO. It's backed by a treasury. And they have a lot of the same features. Um, here we go. But how is it different? What's the difference between Beam and Grin? Both Beam and Grin are implementing the Mimblewimble protocol, but in different ways. Programming language. Beam uses C++, Grin uses Rust. Which is better? I'm not a developer or a programmer, so I can't say. They're just you know betting on different... One's betting on blue, one's betting on red. Let's see where the programmers go to first. Um, another difference is mining algorithm. Beam is modified Equihash. Grin is Cuckoo, a 2, 32. Uh, and Cuckoo 29. What's better? I'm not sure. Time will tell. And this is all leading up to uh, which coin do I like more. And the last thing, which I don't think I highlighted, but it is a big difference for the projects, is Grin is community driven, has no leadership. Beam does have a nonprofit behind it, but it's also heavily. It's also heavily driven by the community as well. This just looks a little more co corporate. This just looks a little more underground. Which coin do I like? It's too early to tell. Um, I'm going to have to see. I'm going to have to do way more research before I even consider investing. And honestly, the crypto market is so is so bearish right now. You guys ask me what altcoins I'm investing in. I'm just focused on Bitcoin, accumulating as much as I can right now. But we'll see. And like I've mentioned before, with privacy coins specifically, it just it's just so developer and programmer and tech based. It's hard for me to judge. And Mimblewimble protocol can be used to enhance Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin were to um, start using Mimblewimble protocol and get some privacy features, also offering scalability, would that make Grin or Beam irrelevant? Time will tell. I think Grin and Beam, what I expect, they're not even on coin market cap yet. But when they do get on, just because there's so much hype behind the tech, I think they'll pump. I think we're going to see a pump. I would stay away because in this bear market, I think that any pump is eventually going to come down. But I'm no financial advisor. Make your own decisions. That was the video today, my friends. Uh, make sure you subscribe and give the video a like if you appreciate the uh, rough rundown of these new altcoins. Alrighty, I'll see you tomorrow.